Okay, here's the software that uh, I wrote for the AFC-1. Let me zoom in here a little bit, and I'll show it to you. It's a fairly large screen, so we'll have to do it in pieces. This is the input air, which will show up, which is measured with thermistors. Degrees centigrade. This is the voltage, and the voltage is the voltage is measured across the uh, measuring bridge that I use for the thermistors. So this voltage in consort with the Steinhardt Hart equation comes up with the resistance of the thermistor. This is merely where I set up the various A to D channels that I want to use for the measuring. The output is basically the same. The degrees which is calculated from the voltage and the actual resistance of the thermistor with that Steinhardt Hart equation again. The differential in temperature Tn minus T out and the actual wattage which is a function of a delta T uh, which is derived through calibration. Here what I have is the calibration of the thermistors at 25 degrees Celsius and these are divider resistors which are used in the bridge so I have this on the screen so that I can change these two readily also if I change out thermistors I uh, depending upon the percentage of accuracy of the thermistor at 25 C this will change also so I have that so I can change those fields but the wattage is derived through calibration so as these temperatures change this wattage will change down here, this is the field for the dud of the device under test, and it will show the current, the voltage, and the wattage of the, the actual device based upon this temperature differential from up here. Here I have the, the locations where I use my heater or my calibration resistor. I can turn it on or off. It reads the input wattage, voltage, and the current to that. I can set my measurement interval time. I can measure in seconds or minutes. Shows the elapsed time. Over here is my fan control. I can save my data points to a data file. And in here I can display a simple graphic of what's going on. And down here any errors that occur in the A to D conversion. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and start the unit up. It's connected to the uh, computer and we'll, we'll show you how uh, the numbers change and what's going on here. Okay, so right now I have the unit hooked up. I have nothing going on inside the chamber. And you can see the input air and the output air temperature measured on the thermistors. And you can see the temperature differential varies. Now this is due to the sensitivity of my thermistor. Small air currents just hitting the bat wing on the input or changes in that heat sink cause it to really fluctuate and of course this is ridiculous when you see something like that but uh, all of that is smoothed out in the end because you see we have a fairly consistent chart here of data points and we have a few extremes I haven't quite worked out exactly I think it's a local FM station that's triggering this I have quite a large signal coming in here and I believe it's getting into my A to D converter but those are easily taken out of there and I have nothing going on as far as the the uh, heater or a device under test at this time so you can see what happens using the Steinhardt uh, Hart equation as the voltage changes across the bridge in which the thermistors are mounted the resistance of the thermistor itself is calculated which is used in the calculations of what the temperature result actually is. You can see here that's that's pretty pretty much accurate right there. Uh, this is not accurate for the fan speed I have. I, uh, I merely wanted to adjust that at this time so you could see these numbers fluctuating and moving around. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, turn the fan on now and get air moving through the chamber. And you can see here that it's fairly consistent. Uh, it's quite easy to smooth that out. Those extremes at the start have a lot to do with the stability of the thermistor themselves. As the thermistors 
draw a current, they actually have a self-heating factor included. But anyway, we'll go ahead and fire up the fan and just blow ambient air through the chamber. Okay, the fan's on, and when I switched it on, you can see there was a shock right there, that pulse. And you can see another one just occurred. But here again, uh, smoothing that, those extremes out. And of course, these are negative. Anything in this direction is positive. So when we have a device under test, what you're going to see is is uh, differences. Now I'll go ahead and and uh, show you that uh, right now we're reading about the same as we were. You know the overall reading is pretty consistent with what it was when the fan was off. So what that shows is actually the temperature generated by the increase in temperature generated by the fan motor itself is included with the ambient and so the input and output remain and with the exception of these weird extremes in sync. So that's close enough for that uh, pretty much explains that and I'll go ahead and turn the the heater on and then we'll watch what happens to the temperatures at that point and how it's reflected in the output. Okay I have the a uh, heater on at this point in time is about 1.06 watts. We don't need to really worry about accuracy here. I just merely want to demonstrate what goes on. Here you can see where I turned the heater on. This green bar across here is the heater and right underneath here you can see that on the input side the thermistor is reading a higher temperature than what we're reading on the output side and as this box, uh, the internals of the box heat up and we reach equilibrium, this will move up and the red will paint over the top of the green. So what we're reading right now is uh, basically what we did at the start and it'll take about 15 or 20 minutes for this to all stabilize. Uh, I hope I mentioned that we can output uh, the data points here so it can be put into a spreadsheet or some or other some other piece of software that we can do data analysis with and so as that thing stabilizes the the energy will increase or the temperature will increase and we will see that in the painting here you can see it's starting to move up now but anyway that should give a pretty good picture of what the what the software does and how I go about using this box and uh, only time will tell but I think it's going to be worth the uh, investment of time to put it together.